welcome back. The outside gardening is done for 2020. <coughs> so we go inside. I'm in the middle of uh, cleaning up inside. Now I got quite a mess during the growing season because I was doing everything outside of course. Um, so I was wondering what video I would make for this week. And I was watching Deborah's Doodles and Digs and she was harvesting her turmeric. I'm like, oh yeah, I have that uh, ginger there. I'm going to collect house plants. And there's several. Of course, I already have the peppers, as you know, and uh, tomatoes. Ginger is another one. I don't think I can even grow it outside during the summer. I am going to try. I went to the uh, grocery store and I got this piece of ginger and I just placed it on the upper shelf there in the grow room and so when I put the fire in and of course it got warm down here this started to sprout so you can see I got a nice big sprout here and roots coming out but if I break it here and here I'll have three pieces one with one two I don't know if these are going to grow, but I have two shoots here. And I have on this piece one, two, three, four shoots. And on this one, one, two, three shoots. So I will grow three plants. Two of them will remain as those plants for 2021 at least uh, and I'm going to take one of them and try to see how it responds to the weather outside um, during the uh, growing season I got this pot which is a deeper one but uh, the people who have grown ginger before said it's better to have a shallow and wider pot so I had these two old containers I put it in the bottom, you see a ring of drainage holes in the lowest part. This will be a nice one for the ginger. It's just a minute, I'll see. It's four and a half inches deep. Of course, this pot is uh, six and a half. Now this one I don't know if it's deep enough or no, that's this one here, uh, it's three and a half inches, this container I have holes right around the outer edge here. The ginger is supposed to be set about two inches deep. So like I said I'll break it. And now I have three pieces. I have my soil pre moistened. This is a potting mix, the same kind of potting mix that I uh, was using last year. Some finely sifted garden soil, peat moss, or actually forced floor humus is what it is, and uh, compost. In my compost, you see that's a little baby worm. There are bigger worms in here. So I've got a fine potting mix that even has worms in it. And so what I'll do, as I said it was supposed to be about two inches down. Here's a larger worm here. So I'll put an inch and a half in this one, or an inch. I don't have to put the saw right to the top, of course. And actually, it's not really a good idea to put the saw right to the top because if your saw dries out, and uh, ginger is one of those things that like a little drier soil, and your soil is right to the surface, then you go to water it, your water could just run right off either side 
And this is the one I'm going to use for outside come summer. I'm going to put this one in there because it has the most shoots. So it will be the strongest plant when I uh, go to put it out. So like I said, I don't have to bring it to the top. This is not really a proper one, uh, so I'm going to put the smallest root in here. It will only have two shoots, and it's a smaller root. I'm going to put that in that one. Now this one, it is around, so I'm going to put it so that the those shoots are pointing up. This one now, of course, this stem here is already growing up, and I have roots down around here. Um, but this one kind of looks like it's going down that way. Of course, I can't put both of them up, so I will put it so that this one is pointing up. And now, I think I'll put that worm over there. Cover it up. There, that'll be that one. I don't know if I have it an inch over the uh, ginger or not, but that should do well. Now I'm going to take this one and put it here. This is my three shells. Uh, so this is the grow room now. I have the wide shallow pot. Uh, this is a pepper. Yes, it is alive. I just had let it go uh, dry over the summer down here in the cool uh, grow room. And so now I'll keep it moist and it'll come back same here this is a hot pepper actually they're both hot peppers I have to get a chocolate pepper for down here this kale here and this one is the same plant you would have seen last year they're slowly growing uh, they didn't grow very much over the summer these are two I have two uh, tiny Tim that are just starting to flower. So I have to set another tiny Tim now so that when this one is done uh, I'll have another one starting to flower. And I have two little uh, kale down there which is something I need to make a video on too because there's something uh, special about those. This is my little plant area by the uh, bay window. It mightn't have good lighting now because I have a strong backlight. It's of course snow on the ground outside and it's bright sunny day. 
but uh, I put the other two ginger right here in behind this bigger pepper plant and this one where it gets less sun because my understanding is that the uh, rhizomes on ginger can suffer from sunburn the same way potatoes do and uh, that you should keep them protected from that. I have a chocolate pepper. It doesn't have any peppers on it. This is a hot pepper. This is my very first hot pepper after the uh, Apache pepper. So this is the child of Apache pepper. I've got a pepper here that's getting ripe. I will do a video on this uh, later. And then there's another chocolate pepper with actually a ripening up pepper. And uh, chives. I'm going to put more plants here over the winter, but I don't know yet uh, what plants are going to be here. I got the sunroom. <laughs> this is basically how the sun, sunroom looks most of the time anyway. There's uh, messy places around. These two tomato plants here, they were originally back here. So it's not because they're out here by the window. Um, they didn't seem to survive the cold that they got outside before I brought them in. This is the uh, furthest north. And of course, there's still a few little tomatoes on it that they were green when I brought it in and the plant just died. And this is uh, Centennial Rocket, which really wasn't growing that well out in the uh, garden. Um, but it was growing and it was producing tomatoes. It just slowly withered after I brought it in here. I have two peppers here that's going to be left out in the just like this to see how they withstand the cold because I didn't have uh, chocolate peppers like this out here last year. There's some couple peppers growing there. So I want to see um, what temperatures, how low temperatures the uh, chocolate pepper will withstand. Funny thing, my uh, marjoram is alive and growing. Growing kind of funny, but it's alive and growing. And my rosemary just up and died. You see the Beaver Lodge Slicer? It was kind of withering outside, but it's struggling along and seems like it's going to survive. I don't know how long they, they grow. I can't remember. I think I only have one indeterminate uh, tomato. The two bigger pepper plants that were here last year, I covered them up in a bag like this and that helped them survive the coldest nights last year. So this is what I got done again this year. Um, they will be pretty much dormant for most of the time now until weather warms up in the spring. And besides that, they won't get too hot sitting there even if it uh, does, if we do get warm days. This has nothing to do with moisture or sunshine or temperature. One would say, well, maybe it's because it's determinate, but I still have green tomatoes on it. So I don't know what's up with this thing. This is the 42 days. Uh, I can't remember what this one is. I thought I'd put a name on them all, but I don't see the name. Well, he's not doing that great but he does look to be alive silver fir tree he is quite alive I doesn't seem like I'm going to get any seed off of uh, this amaranth so if I want this type of amaranth I'm going to have to buy seed again and the stupid say tomatoes they survived what cold they got just fine and uh, they're doing fine here so, we'll see how long they go. I cut off several sunflower heads.
brought them in here and got them in here drying out now. This is a uh, large seeded tall. That's the sunflowers I had. Except I got this little one here. This is a reddish uh, sunflower. I would have to go back and find out what the name of them are. It is. I didn't check that up yet. But it's a almost entirely dark red sunflower. Little Mountain Ranch. Don't remember her name now. Where she takes her beet seed in and lets it dry out. So I took the plants up just a week or so ago and the thing still wants to grow. But I got them here getting that all dried. There's one, two, three, four. So I'm letting them dry out and I'll take all the seed off. That is our beginning for indoor growing for uh, this season. I hope you're interested in following along. And uh, don't forget to leave me a comment. If you've got uh, an indoor plant, a food producing plant that could be grown as a house plant that you would uh, like for me to try, leave it in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video.